Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 ARM on VMware Fusion. So this tutorial might come as quite a surprise to some people because VMware have been very vocal about not officially supporting Windows 11 ARM. For example, on this blog post, VMware are saying that Windows virtualization is a second priority behind Linux. And furthermore, Michael Roy, the manager of VMware Fusion, has stated that Windows 11 ARM is not supported by VMware Fusion due to the fact that licenses for Windows 11 ARM are not being sold and it is is also against the Microsoft End User Licensing Agreement. However, this has not stopped companies like Parallels from producing their own virtual machine software that pretty much fully supports Windows 11 ARM. And that's because Parallels are passing on the compliance with the end user licensing agreement down to the user. And it's really up to the user to decide whether they are in compliance with the EU LA or not. So anyway, we're gonna be using the VMware Fusion Public Tech Preview. And this is going to be an interesting comparison because we don't have official support for Windows 11 ARM and there won't be the normal drivers and tools which help the guest and the host operating systems communicate with each other. However, this is an interesting proposition because the public tech preview is currently free. So this will be one of the only free ways of running a high-end virtual machine with the hypervisor. So anyway, we're going to start with this VMware Fusion link, which I'll leave in the description. All we need to do is to scroll down to the bottom here and then download Fusion for Apple Silicon. On the product download page, we're going to download the ARM64 DMG. I'm going to click download now. Here I'm going to sign into my account. If you don't have an account already, you can sign up for a free account here. Next, I'm going to agree to the customer connect terms of use. If we're missing any information in our profile, we need to update our profile. Once our profile is updated, I'm going to agree to the end user licensing agreement and press accept. And our VMware Fusion has started to download here. Once that's done, I'm going to double click on the DMG and then we're going to double click on this installer. And I'm going to click open here. I'm going to type in my macOS password. Here we're going to click agree and then next. Mac password again, done. Here it's asking us to open up accessibility. I'm going to press OK. Open system preferences. Click on the padlock icon and then authenticate with a fingerprint. Scroll down to VMware Fusion Tech Preview and then tick. Close this window. So one thing we're going to be using is the latest beta build for Windows 11 ARM. I've built this from the UUP dump to create an ISO file. I'm going to leave a link in the description for my tutorial video of how to do this. Please follow the instructions and create your own Windows 11 ARM ISO. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a custom virtual machine. So we're not going to use any other options here. We're going to press continue here. And then we're going to click other here and then we'll select other 64-bit ARM. Press continue and then select create a new virtual disk and press continue. And then we're going to click customize settings. So here we're just going to make sure that it's in a sensible place under the virtual machines folder of our user folder. And we're going to rename this one Windows 11 ARM and click save. So the settings menu will appear and we're going to select processors and memory. We're going to select four processor cores and then we're going to allocate half of the memory of the computer. So in this case, I'm going to allocate four gigabytes of RAM. If you have a 16 gigabyte machine, then I will suggest allocating eight gigabytes of RAM. Then click show all and then click the hard disk icon here and then click advanced options. Change the bus type to SATA and allocate at least 25 gigabytes of space. I'm going to allocate 50 gigabytes of space and then click apply. Then we need to click show all again and then CD DVD drive. Then click connect CD DVD drive and then we're going to select the ISO file. So we're going to choose disk and then I'm going to navigate to my Windows 11 ISO and click open here. And now what we can do is to close this and then close VMware Fusion by pressing the menu bar there and pressing quit. Then what we'll do is we'll navigate to our virtual machine folder. So by default, I'm going to go to finder and then press go and then click home. And then the virtual machine folder is going to be the last one there. And then we have our Windows 11 arm here. We're going to control click on the virtual machine and click show package contents. And then we're going to find the VMX file, control click on this, click open with text edit. And then what we need to do is to find the guest OS here and we're going to change this value here. We're going to change this to arm-windows11-64. I'll leave this code in the description below. Then we're going to press file and save, and then close this. And then we need to reopen VMware Fusion. The Windows 11 virtual machine will be selected, so I'm just going to boot this open now. I'm going to close this, and then press any key to boot from the CD or DVD drive. If you have an issue, you can just restart it, and then try again. Here we're just going to press next, and then click install now and then click I don't have a product key. And then we're gonna select Windows 11 Professional. So if you do go ahead and click next at this section here, it's going to tell you that we can't run Windows 11. So we need to run some registry changes in order to bypass this error message. So I'm gonna click back here. Then I'm gonna press Shift F10. So in order to enable F10 for most Macs, you'll also need to press the function key as well. Function Shift and F10, and that will load up the command prompt. Then we're gonna type in the command regedit and return, and this will give us the registry editor. Then we need to open up HQ Local Machine, System, and then Setup. We're going to control click on Setup, and then click New, and then Key. In this folder, we're going to create a new keyword. 
So control click on this space, click new, and then create a DWORD 32-bit value. This one is gonna be called bypass TPM check. Make sure you get the capital letters in there correctly. Control click on this file and then modify, and then change this value to one hexadecimal. And again, we control click on the blank space, click new, click DWORD value 32-bit, and then type in bypass secure boot check and press return. And then we're gonna control click on this and click modify and change the hexadecimal value to one and press OK. Then we can close this down as well as the command prompt. Now we can press next, then accept the licensing agreement and press next, choose custom, and then we're gonna be installing on this 50 gigabyte drive we created earlier. Press next and let this install Windows 11 ARM as normal. Give it a bit of time because this might take a while. So now this is installed, I'm just gonna click yes on everything so that we can get through this setup process. So one issue is that we don't have internet. This is something we're gonna fix a little bit later. This is because the guest OS is not detected the internet connection from the virtual machine. Just gonna continue set up here. And then our Windows 11 ARM is now set up and now we can log in. So as you can see, we can now log into the Windows ARM 11 desktop as normal. However, we are missing one component, which is the internet. So this internet connection is not being detected by the virtual machine. And so we have to enter a command to enable this. So we're going to need to open the command prompt. I'm gonna click on the start menu here and type in the word CMD. Then we're going to run as administrator. Click yes. Then we're gonna type in the command bcd edit forward slash debug on. I'll leave this code in the description. I'll press return. And then we'll type in the command bcd edit forward slash dbg settings space net space host ip colon 10.0.0.1 space port colon 55555 and press enter. Now that this is complete, we're gonna restart the virtual machine. So I'm just going to click the start menu here and click restart. Here we're just gonna enter our Mac password. And now we're able to enter the virtual machine. And now we're able to use the internet as normal and get full connectivity on this virtual machine. Here I'm just gonna run a Geekbench 5 benchmark. So I've run Geekbench 5 through VMware Fusion and also through Parallels. And as you can see, the Parallels score is gonna be slightly higher. And that's because Parallels has got the toolbox and is also more optimized as well. And a lot more effort has gone into optimizing this for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So you can clearly see that there is not much gaming potential for this virtual machine software. That's also because this virtual machine does not have proper display drivers either. So for example, here we can't really change the display resolution. So we're stuck at 1024 by 768 resolution. Even if I full screen this, we're still stuck at this four by three aspect ratio. And furthermore, if I do try to run games, so for example, I'm trying to run the Hitman Absolution launcher, and this is just the launcher, it's not the full game, and we're showing here a black screen at the moment. So we have no real hope of getting any kind of alternative gaming performance out of this. However, this public preview release does remain an interesting proposition, mainly because this is the only free way to run a performant virtual machine like this. Of course, we have the option of running through UTM. However, UTM is far slower because it relies on emulation rather than virtualization. If you're interested in finding out about Windows games that run through Parallels on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please check out my top 10 video here. I'll leave a link to this video in the description. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.